First thing we're going to do, I have a session that's open right here. just want to check my parameters. Audio, post-production, standard sampling rate, 48,000 hertz. This particular session is 16-bit. Uh, often if we're in the field, we're going to probably originate files to 24-bit. Um, I just know this is 16-bit, so I'm going to go 16-bit. BWF, uh, this is television. I just happen to know that, so it's going to be 2997DF. So I'm going to go import under my file menu, import session data. And I'm going to navigate to when I want to import, which here is sample OMF. Click on that. Now notice OMF and AF are terms that are going to be used interchangeably. Folks that have been around a while will probably say OMF. Uh, newer folks will probably say AAF, uh, Open Media Framework Interchange and Advanced Authority Format. Uh, again, they're essentially very, very similar in, in what they're dealing with, which is um, data interchange. I select open and I get my import window. You'll see it's, it even says here AAF slash OMF import progress. So even Avid Digital Design uses the, the term interchangeably. What I got up here is information about session, start time of this particular file I'm, I'm importing, frame rate, bit depth, sampling rate, file type, embedded, um, audio media options, what what do I want to go with as far as whenever I import that audio, the, the media files. Um, check in your Pro Tools manual. I believe it's uh, in version 10. It's on page 365. They discuss all the parameters. I'm not going to get into that in this video. It's something you can read up upon. Um, I'm going to go with copy from source media here. We don't have video in this, so we're going to just link. I apparently have 12 tracks of audio in this OMF. These will all go to new tracks. That's my only option. I can either not import the file, each file, each track, or I can import it onto a new track. Kind of like whenever you import an audio file and it says, do you want to stick this in your clips or regions bin, or do you want it to go to a new track? Same type of thing. But in this case, if I have stuff just go, if I go none, um, then it's going to import it, but it's not going to, it's not, oh, actually, it's, it's, uh, if, down here, if I go do not import, then it will import the audio, but it won't put it on a track, so it's kind of pointless. Uh, import rendered audio effects, I'm not going to go with that. Uh, just like in Pro Tools, uh, the Avid or your video workstation can add uh, processing, such as EQ, compression, whatever, and that stuff can be then married to a file, which you know the editor, picture editors might add that to, to add some effect or to, to gain some clarity while they're listening. But chances are you have, you'll have a little better control with your processing than than they will in their system. Import clip game and import volume automation. This will end up uh, translating any volume type of rides, level differences, if you will. The uh, their scratch mix, you'll be able to get that, which I find very helpful. It gives you a gauge as to knowing where they are or where they they're coming from. Pan uh, odd even tracks. Uh, panning information comes across with within the AAF OMF um, protocol, so I don't see a necessary uh, reason really to do that. Markers. Markers are like location memories of Pro Tools, memory locations. Um, you can import them or not. They'll show up as location uh, memory locations in your session, and they can also provide some uh, information as far as what the editor was dealing with at a particular point in the sequence. Let's keep time code where it is. That's what maintain absolute time code values means here. Generally, unless you have some reason to, you don't want to change the time code of your sequence. You want it to be where it is because it's tied to that particular time code from the video side. So if we shift it around, then our two items won't be in sync. So we're going to keep that where it is. Track offset, again, we're not going to offset things. Not dealing with any sample rate conversion. This is something you might do if you're doing some film originated things going to video or vice versa or something instead of how. Uh, going to some other rate, we're just going to negate that. We don't need to worry about that because this is 48K and our session is 48K. All these are going to new tracks. Uh, track data to import, and this says some. What you'll see here is this has a lot of different options, and a lot of it is just tied for if you're going to import one Pro Tool session into another, there might be some neat things that you want to have translate. Say you're doing an EP and you've tracked and, and done some um, cleanup work on four different tracks. And then you're going to mix them, and you want to mix them all from one session because it's just convenient. You might have similar drum sounds, similar drum processing, similar vocal processing, etc. 
you can import those all into one session and there might be some type of processing and things of that nature that you apply to each session that you want to translate. We don't have those parameters coming from the video system, from the Avid or, or the Final Cut. So we're just, you know, we'll keep this at some, uh, which is what its default is. Um, outside of the window, there are things for like the icon automation and custom fader groups. You can't see those outside of the window here. Uh, those That would make it be all of the things. What are we going to do here? We're going to import this and replace existing playlists. Well, right now we have no playlist. Each track always has a playlist um, and we don't have any tracks. So we're going to create them and replace them with this new stuff because there's nothing there to begin with. All right, I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to get some processing. Sample OMF, AAF, restoring audio. Some effects were ignored. There's probably some type of processing effect. And it was ignored because I said ignore the rendered effects. I can save a detailed description or hit no. It's up to you. I'm going to close my session setup right here. And as you'll see, all this blue right now is offline. And what it's doing is processing all this information. It's processing all the audio. Basically, it's copying it. It's copying it from that embedded OMF, which has the session information and the media all tied together, which is very helpful. It's great for translating. It's great to get that from your editor. Um, another way you can do it is similar to the way that they do it in Pro Tools, where you have a, we have a Pro Tools PTX file and then an audio files folder. You can also get a .omf or .aaf file that's similar. It's like your EDL along with a media files folder, which has the media in it. You could have these two separate entities. Uh, these are embedded. One thing to be aware of with embedded is that there is a two gigabyte file limit. Um, and that can, if you have a very dense session or a long session, it can definitely um, mess it up. It can crash and you wouldn't know why. Okay, so there we go. We imported, we see file names, we see by default. Here's our universe, um, clip gain values that show you different different mixing things they did that says minus 17, etc. I'll turn off clip gain right now and I want to, um, let's get my little quick time movie thing here. Uh, let me turn off click, clip gain, or not display, not turn it off, but just not display. And I want to show you just really quickly time code information in the clip. So if we go to original timestamp, what we see here, the neat thing about OMF and AAF, um, OMF and A, yeah, OMF and AAF is uh, acts as an EDL, essentially saying at this point, this is the original time code for this particular chunk of audio where it was originally recorded at. If we're thinking of the time of day time code, and it says 19 hours, 18 minutes, 53 seconds, and 25 frames, and that clip lasts until 19 hours, 18 minutes, 55 seconds, and eight frames. And we see that this time code corresponds to our main counter, which is one hour and nine, nine seconds and 16 frames. Remember, our shows in the States are going to start at one hour. Uh, NTSC shows start at one hour, and everything builds from there. So this is pretty much my EDL information. I know that that is where that take was taken from. And we see the same kind of thing down here on some of these other clips, uh, etc. All right, so that's how we import an OMF. We're always going to save it. And there you go. The next thing we want to do is to import a movie. Um, just like we have layers in audio, layers being tracks that we end up mixing to stereo or surround or whatnot, video has a similar thing. They have a number of tracks that they'll use. Maybe they'll have some titling, maybe some green screen things, things that they need to layer. Pro Tools can only play one video track at a time, uh, have one active track at a time. So on the video side, they'll normally uh, consolidate, uh, render, if you will, their final output or a reference for you. So it's everything packed in there so you can see whatever video it is just across one video track. So let's import our video now. We've done our audio, our OMF. Let's go to our video and we will import same window. Instead of doing session data, we're gonna do video. We're gonna navigate. Here's our movie. Notice that this is grayed out because we can't select that, but movie is uh, okay. Where am I going to put this? I don't have a video track yet, so this main video track is uh, grayed out. New track, because I don't have one, so I'm going to stick it there. A couple places I can put it, session start. Now, that's not the session start of my where the OMF was. If my Pro Tools session starts at some random number, like 58 minutes, that's where it's going to put it, even though my session, my OMF that I imported, starts at an hour. So make sure you know that you can differentiate between the two. Session start, the very beginning of your Pro Tools session. If you hit return to zero, it would be there. Selection, that's if I have a cursor click somewhere, 
right now, if you look up here, you see my cursor is, hit, is selected at an hour, 10 seconds, and 29 frames. So do I want the video to start there? No. Chances are that the video is starting at the exact same time as the sequence. Uh, the astute video editor will do that for you. They'll make the video match the, the first frame of video match the first frame of the all map or vice versa. So that you know that this is where I spotted to. So our other option is the spot. And what that does is place a video or anything, audio, video, at a specific point. I'm going to hit spot and I'm going to select import audio from file. This allows me to hear what is what the reference mix was, what came out of the Avid. Um, in case there's some effects, maybe they put a telephone effect on something or they added some reverb here or there. And also to verify sync, to make sure that the two things are, the two sessions are, are um, phasing, that my OMF and the reference audio from the QuickTime, their reference mix, is phasing, is synchronous with our audio. That way we know that we are in sync. So I'm going to hit OK. It's going to give me a window saying, where do you want to put this? Well, I want this to start at one hour. And it's just so smart that it knew to put this at one hour. I don't know why it knew that, but it does. So start time, one hour. If I can't do that, if, if it puts some random number, I'm going to use my numeric keypad and type in 01000000. And there you go. And then I'm going to hit OK. And you'll notice, and there's a video, it's going to ask me, where do I want my audio to go? Well, remember, whenever I imported the OMF, it copied all of the audio from this embedded file, basically extracting it into my audio files folder. I like doing that method because I know I have this self-contained session where all my audio is there and I, I, I can take it anywhere. I'm a big, big advocate for file management. So I'm going to have the reference audio for this movie to go in there also. Click. Converting sample, OMF, moves to sample left and right. Um, I didn't select interleave files. And so uh, it's probably giving me a .l.r. So what we have here is after audio three, because that's where my curse was collected. Anytime you import something, it's going to stick it after the track. It's going to create a new track after the track that you had selected. So I had this selected, so it stuck it here. Do I want it there? No. I, you know, that's kind of weird to have it in the middle of my, my files here. I'm going to move it up. And you'll see here that we have audio. This is the audio that matches this. And here's my video. And my video is right now online and everything. Something to be aware of is that I wouldn't normally keep this thing in frames. I actually don't even keep the video track up, this track up, because it's, it's I don't need to look at it. it. It takes up screen real estate. This is what I call my real estate. This is how much space I have. And I'm going to probably have a good amount of tracks whenever I'm done with this after I separate things. So I don't want to, uh, you know, clog up my, you know, my visual, if you will. So I often hide these. But if you're a person that likes to keep this on, I would put this on blocks because it's less processing for the computer. Um, here's the audio. This is the reference. Once I make sure that these things play together and sync, and I can actually see waveforms. This is my reference, and this is an audio here. So we know we're phased. Um, may not be able to play it, and that's fine. That's probably some some issue as to why we can't play it right now. Um, but we should be able to hear some phasing. Let's see. That's right. You in a priceless feeling of. Whereas, try, you in a try. I don't have this wired right now, so you can't directly hear the output of the Pro Tools, but you get the idea. You can see that it's it's phased and it's good. So after I'm done with that, what I often do is I will hide the sample OMF, or I'm sorry, hide my video track, and also hide um, make inactive. Control, click on the name, hide and make inactive. Um, you can mute it, I guess, but re realize that if you happen to accidentally unmute it by pressing maybe option, mute on a track somewhere, or if you're trying to unmute a couple tracks, that will become unmuted even though it's hidden because hidden tracks can still play. So I do this, control, click on it. I'm going to hide this. And you'll just see them over here. Obviously, they're grayed out, um, italicized. I'm sorry, they're italicized, meaning they're inact. They're, they're not showing up and that's inactive and then this right here is not dark so that means it's hidden. So I have this, I've got my video. Now how do I show my video? Well sometimes what you have to do is make sure that your video is online and that's under options. If you go options and video track online that basically tells the video to chase, to follow, to go if you will. If that's not checked you're not going to see anything. Additionally under my window I have to tell it the, that I want to look at the video. Here I'm going to look at the video. If I go again into online and take that off, it says movie is offline. 
Um, I can put that on if I click on my video track. Actually, there's this O here, and that it, that engages it to be online. So you can do it there if you keep this page up, or you can just do options, um, video track online. So something you'll notice just that you'll notice is this time code 103 4104 matches that. So I'm in sync, and, and the world is happy. So there you go. That's importing the video and the reference.